You alright, man? Hi, right, man. How you doing? Yeah, man, I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Yeah, I'm cool. Cool. Can you get the levels right and stuff? Yeah, it seems to be. Hello. Seems to be all right. And what about the lag? Did you see it at the start again? Um, I didn't see it. I don't normally see the lag on um, as we're streaming. I only notice it uh, retrospectively when I watch the YouTube videos. Like I think okay. actually built in on the YouTube video for some reason in the first ten seconds it lags. Um, right. The recording lags, but yeah, I guess we'll be past that now anyway. So that's cool. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's right. Well, uh, I, I did see it, and your face was just sort of jerking around a bit. But um, no, man, that's just yeah, me. It's fine. It, it loves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think actually I made a joke last time that um, oh, yeah. that I had a epilepsy or something and he should shut up. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to make that joke or that type of joke every single time and not realise until afterwards that we've made that joke again. <laughs> it's like episode five, Deja Vu. We just keep yeah. getting Deja Vu in his lives. We can't figure it out. Shit, that was it. What are you, just blurry all the time, man? It's not lagging, you're blurry in real life. <laughs> <laughs> But you're just like a ghost, like a cloud man, just all the time. Like, <laughs> like if people walk past me in the street, they'd be like, oh, he was lagging. <laughs> yeah, mate, you're coming around to my house, like, yeah, just leave your window open. I'll just come in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll float in, man. In. Blur all the way in. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Um, yeah, a blur, man. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, Pretty cool, yes. Yeah, so I've been listening. Well, I listened to a, a YouTube uh, thing of the UFO question by Kurt Vonnegut, and then I read the short story as well. I yeah. know you did as well. And uh, mate, it was awesome. Like it was, it was short enough, so I read it in like 20, 30 minutes. It was. Uh, it, I don't know. I got the idea of it really quick, and it was like, like we'll give a, a short summary sort of thing. But it was like, um, it was kind of a simple concept. Do you know what I mean? On on the surface yeah. of it that there's a machine that turns on a sound that makes people euphoric. And uh, that was that was pretty much the entire like the, the entire premise and someone was trying to sell the idea. Yeah. But it was three, done um, sorry. Really nicely. Yeah, there were, there were three characters really were there. There was um some sort of sociology professor, yeah. um the radio presenter, like he's like the big man about town. Everybody knows him. He's very confident and boisterous. Yeah. Um one second I will not install this update right now. I'll skip this version. <laughs> I don't remember that bit in the story, man. <laughs> no, 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 that never happened. So there was uh, the sociology guy, the radio guy, and um, just the, what was the, because there was the main character we were often told from his point of view, like where he was at his family home and stuff. I don't know what his profession was, but. Uh, what I think that was a, that was a sociologist, Um I think <laughs> should have figured yeah. these things out. We should have these well, names and stuff. Anyway, there's like three guys, and between them, they all have different sort of skills that they can bring to the table. And the idea of mass marketing this potential noise that you can tune in on a radio signal and it makes everybody like euphoric. The euphio, mm -hmm. I think they call it uh, the euphio machine, which is why it's the euphio question. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the basic premise of it. But we were saying, weren't we? Like, obviously, we can't. You know, it's like 20, 30 minute read. It's really not very long for how interesting and how good it is. Um, just Google it, the UFO question. We'll put a link to it in the description as well um, of the video. Um, so yeah, probably if you've never heard of it and you sound interested by that at all, um, probably read it first and then play the rest of the video. Would you say that sounds about right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. But because it's so short, obviously, I read it through in like, I'm not a fast reader or anything, about 30 minutes, so that was fine. Um, and yeah, I think it was uh, Alexis on Fire's blog, wasn't it? And if you just type it into Google, you'll find it all there. Um, but yeah, amazing. Oh, the YouTube video as well is from a 1991 uh, TV series, series one, episode one of uh, Monkey House, and it, they did a really like accurate, dramatic, like a you know, an acting, real people sort of a representation of it. That's really good, really worth a watch. And it seemed to there's a few differences, but it seemed to stick to the story pretty closely as well. Okay, so what? What are the differences? I've never, um, so, never seen it. There, there were a few bits where it was just like the actors sort of um, implied extra stuff that wasn't really in the book, um, and there was a few parts of the story that they'd, the actor would like a, a particular slant, if you know what I mean. And um, I'm just sure there was, there was a few different things that just sort of took a bit of artistic license where there wasn't necessarily. I'm trying to think of examples, and I've. Oh, uh, you mean like a, a bias, almost like there were certain good guys, bad guys, or like. Um... Yeah, maybe, because obviously you as the reader can put your own sort of tone on it as you're reading it and put a negative or a positive display onto someone's actions. But do you mean like maybe the actors were 
acting as if it was obviously that their actions were negative um, when then maybe it wasn't read like that. Yeah, I think you read into the story quite a lot. And like, just for, I'm trying to think of specific examples and I've, uh, I've got to think of a good one. But the uh, radio presenter guy that everyone knows, like, I'm sure in the book, you sort of, you read him as kind of smarmy and kind of, um, kind of over the top, but the guy yeah. definitely like exaggerated all that and, and stuff. So it was just, it was somebody else's interpretation of the story where you'd have like a different one in your head, you know what I mean? And that's the same with anything, like, uh, you know, when the Lord of the Rings film came out, like, I imagined the, uh, you know what I mean, like the characters to, to think and talk and look different because he'd never seen them. You know, it was just somebody else's vision of it. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot of that, but again, really simple concept, and it was the Euphoria radio on it, and then the guy was trying to basically sell the idea as like pay per view happiness, um, yeah, which was like, oh no, it was just crazy. Like the it was so it was a signal that came from the deep space. The guy created a, a telescope that saw through cosmic dust. Behind the dust, he found like a radio signal that when people listened to it, made them just blissful. So that was like, that was the thing. The guy made a machine where he hooked it to a television set and then people got like absolutely dragged in. So just that, like to pay for happiness was the, was the thing. And that's interesting enough by itself. Like if, if like just, well, I'll ask you, like, what would you do if I, I could just give you happiness and you pay me a bit of money? Are you talking about heroin? <laughs> <laughs> well, but... I, I don't think you can go move on from some of these especially just just that in a, in a nutshell sort of thing i don't think you can go from that and not really speak about drugs or something along those lines and that was one of the uh the things in in the documentary actually or the little uh, you know the episode of that television program uh the, the actors spoke about the experience um as they were doing it like they were in a drug state and they were using words like oh that was a really good trip and there was right. bits where like the characters were talking to each other and he, somebody called my, someone man or dude or something um, in like a really laboured, like hippie stereotype sort of a way. And uh, there, there was a little bit of that. And that was one of the examples that I was talking about earlier on, of the do sort of documentary being a bit different. But um, Well, I mean, yeah. on, on the, in the uh, short story, um, I think uh, his wife, uh, one of the character's wife, when they're talking about potentially, um, when they come back round after the experience, because that's what it's like, isn't it? Like they're in like mm -hmm. a haze. Um, they keep coming in and out of sort of normal consciousness. And then, you, you know, you as the reader initially think it might have been 10 or 15 minutes, but it says each of those times, six hours six hours had passed. Mm -hmm. Every single time they'd realised, you know, that they weren't in the state of happiness anymore. So they had to look around and see that it was cold or um, realise that they were hungry and then, right, ah, we'll turn the volume up. Mm. Um, yeah. And that was almost <laughs> yeah. like... You know, I've never done heroin, never done anything like that. But from what you see in sort of popular culture and stuff and just from kind of what you would know about it, it sounds as if like, you know, they're taking another hit or something. It's just like turn the volume up of this signal and all our problems will just go away. And whether that be in the material world, like the window is broken and rain's coming in or I'm starving right now and I want to do something about it mm. or, you know, in your inner self, like the idea of you've got some problems or there's people in your home right now that you don't even like or, um, yeah, you've just got things to resolve within yourself. Actually, we'll ignore all of those physical and mental states right now and we'll just turn the volume up. Like we'll do another hit. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a large kind of, a large feeling of that, um, the tone of it all. It was, it was kind of scary really. Um, like the idea that you would be able to go so long um, without even noticing and you know the guy had fallen over into the fireplace smashed his head down or something mm -hmm. and uh, they were all just laughing about it and yeah. yeah it was quite almost like a, a portrayed or at least it made me think about like a drug-like experience mm -hmm. that the entire thing i was thinking like throughout it was just it wasn't a good thing like no, no none of it was really good like the idea of it seemed on paper to be like perfect or something like ideal or something like idealistic but um the reality it was almost almost unanimously negative like its impacts and its implications and stuff even though the people it was the expense of these people like feeling you know blissful and like sitting around and not not cooking and eating and cleaning and stuff not drinking water and things like that um which did have like really heavy heavy drug connotations um i think overall like the sort of um Oh mate, I've just 
Mike, I've gone blank, man. It it made me it made me feel a little bit sick. Like sometimes when you're reading it, you know, like throughout you were saying that um, you kind of feel bad um, when you're reading it, or you know it's a bad thing. It did kind of, and I think the reason why I felt a bit uneasy reading it is because that's not something that's a fictional concept. It's something that's very real. Um, like there was a lot of things that I was comparing it to in my mind. Like heroin was the first one that obviously sprang to mind just through um, like seeing certain films and, and things like that. Um, that's kind of how that sort of thing is portrayed. And then I'll, and hear about it in the media, you know, people sort of ruining their lives because it's the only thing that they care about uh, now. Um, and they don't have to worry about any other smaller things day to day. They just care about the next hit, like I on the on the story turning the volume up. But also, um, it reminded me of a lot of things that probably most people, you know, listening to this or you know us right now actually use on a day to day basis. Basis. Maybe we don't even realise that we're doing it. Like it reminded me of something like Netflix um, <laughs> or um, VR or or something like that. Like um, just. Well, she, she called it, the, the mum called it an electronic opium den. And mm. that's kind of what Netflix is. It's just <laughs> like you, you, you turn on, you know, happiness by the kilowatt. Like you turn on the, the TV and you just forget about your day's work that you've done and the shit that's going off in your life right now and your problems that you're having. Ah, you know, you get to relax. <laughs> um, and when, it, when it's over a timer starts ticking until the next one starts. You don't even have to do anything. You can just sit there um, and you could just sit there for hours and hours and hours. Like, and you think, right, I'll, uh, I'll you know, realized after the show's finished, I'm hungry. Um, ah, fuck it. You know, next one started now. I'll, I'll wait another episode and I'll get some food after that. Um, and that could be, you know, something you've got to do, uh, you know, like a little chore for the day. It could be a piece of work. It could be to just eat, go to the toilet, like mm -hmm. things like that. And you just, you just put them off like because one more episode is coming on. And so I think a lot of people would read that as if some like really fictional sort of heavy, crazy concept that we should try and avoid uh, and never get to, you know, like don't let him produce this gadget. But I think mm. this guy was spot on, man. This was written in like 1951 and they, I think it was just around the time that TVs became sort of mass common and popular in the US. Um, and so there was probably some semblance of it with TV. But yeah, I think like with things like the internet and Netflix and VR and all these things, like I think he nailed it. Like that's where we are. Maybe we've been there for a long time with like capitalist society and stuff like that. But I think that's why it makes me feel really uncomfortable and really uneasy and you feel bad throughout it is because you know deep down that we're kind of there now, at least as a society, at least, you know, say 75% upwards of people in our society probably live their lives like that, um, you know, in, in first world countries at least. Um, and I think you know deep down, or at least I do, that's why I was feeling that I have certain tendencies, I have had tendencies like that in the past, where that's what you do, you're just looking for that little happiness hit that you can buy. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I've just been paid, I'm going to spend the next three hours on Amazon or the internet just buying things. And I might not even yeah. necessarily use them when they arrive straight away, but you know that felt good for that moment to buy something. It brought me a bit of happiness. And there's that mm. awesome um, Alexis on Fire song, um, "Happiness by the Kilowatt." Um, that yeah, I think all the way through this background there's the wake up, like wake up, etc. Mm. And um, yeah, that's that reminded me of that as if like telling people to wake up, like not just from the little trancey sort of state that you're in from the noise or the drug or whatever it is, but like from how you're living your life maybe or how people are living their lives, like just wake yeah. up. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think there's a certain, sort of, a certain sort of personality that sort of collectively forms from your society or your culture or whatever. And um, it's rare you get to see that in yourself, you know what I mean? And there's some of these situations that something like literature, some like one of these stories can really it can poke so accurately at something. Do you know what I mean? It can like give you a really, like that's a perfect, it was a perfect metaphor for a load of different things about modern, modern society, instant gratification. I want it now, bigger, better, stronger, faster, all that, all that shit. Wait, it's just what we're like at, at this point. And that seems to be like the consensus of what uh, society's values seem to like, align with. And that like, it was even in, I don't know how many pages, like 20 pages, 30 minutes to read, whatever it was. 
um, it really accurately sums that entire thing up about like corporate greed taking shit away. But then on the flip side, like equal and opposite on the flip side of that, um, people fuck their lives up if they're, if they're, you know, like, still, like the mice, uh, they give the that brain thing to where they got like a little button and if they pressed it, it shocked their brain and released like... Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? And like they, they starved to death and shit because they were just like, they, they wouldn't drink the water. They were sat near the button just pressing it all the time. And uh, man, all those things, like they can all like add up and all get like, just they can get on top of you in the end. And then... Um, yeah, no, that's that's it. That was my point. <laughs> yeah, I, it's quite scary, really, isn't it? Like how how easy you can slip into that, and like you said with the corporate greed, that was a big part of it as well. Like, because um, you know it was like a the triangle, like the three characters. Um, one of them kind of represented sort of like a family man who seemed to have good morals and intentions. Um, the the scientist guy who was designed designing the device. Um, again seem to have good morals and intentions but once he was presented with a problem like the idea of can you get this tool can you get this signal into a box that everyone can have in their homes for under x amount of dollars mm -hmm. like he's really enticed by that now because now his ego has been challenged now he's like uh, his skill set has been challenged by the idea of like it's not necessarily we're not going to think through a moral lens whether we can develop this device we're not going to think whether it's good whether people need it it's just can i do it like, I wonder if I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was that which you see in, um, you know, society happening right now with the just fucking full speed ahead train-like sort of motion that we're going ahead with technology. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, we're, we're using the internet right now. We're using uh, sort of Hangouts and lots of different pieces of technology that mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to do this right now if it wasn't for that full steam ahead approach or at least not this early um but yeah there is definitely some caution maybe to be applied with just mindlessly pursuing technology mm -hmm. and only technology at least if you're um not concentrating in other areas of your life or it's making you avoid sort of actually pursuing happiness rather than just buying it um, so there was that for the sec second part of the triangle with that idea. And then I thought the other character which represented the different idea was the corporate greed, was the radio guy. And he was so head on, like thinking about the millions that they can have, mm -hmm. maybe billions, like mm -hmm. the way to advertise it and market it to every different social group. Yeah. Um, he had a plan like overnight, didn't he? Yeah, he came like, to him like a fucking... All done. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, look, guys, I've got it. I've got the big thing. We're going to hit the big time. Us, me, I, like, we're not going to consider whether it's good or bad for anyone, but mm -hmm. how can we make money off this? Because we've discovered it. Um, and so, obviously, there's a huge thing, you know, idea there to consider for our current society, like, you know, whether it be fast food chains or, um, I don't know, just, just things that are, generally not necessarily good for people either their body or their mind or but they will advertise it on television to kids and they will just almost brainwash you from such a young age that if you can eat this cheeseburger if you can buy this new upgrade for your phone um if you can get the fastest internet you will be happier than the person that has slower internet um and i think that's obviously we've probably lived in that kind of world for a long long time but hmm. when it when you read something like this it really makes you notice that that's kind of how a lot of us are living and you know i'm guilty of myself yeah um yeah no yeah, i know what you mean you can live in like a sort of a stereotype can't you i just think um like especially because in the, in the it was like was it the 1950s he wrote it was it set in the 1950s was that uh, like, oh that's a good point i'd say actually sure. mentioned it, i don't think but it I think there was one line in the story that said um, they compared it to some sort of television set. So television sets must have existed. Right. Um, but I think, again, I think it probably was set at a similar time to when um, it was written, mm. just from yeah. the idea of TV being quite early. Yeah. I don't, and again, I don't know when the first people had TVs, but I'm sure that was like by the 50s, obviously, if it was written then. Like, I think they had televisions then, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, I think it was the 50s, like late 40s oh, and the 50s where they boomed. Yeah. 
so it was a really accurate look forward into the way that sort of like corporate con like con the consumer mindset sort of is and where are people are a lot about that it's like instant gratification um mouth pleasure <laughs> whatever then people yeah, say yeah it's mouth pleasure, pleasure. Yeah. It's mouth pleasure yeah. which is just perfect for what it is because you just a moment of that moment of pleasure that, that little rush you get from buying something or that little you know the little little pieces of uh little hits of dopamine or whatever it is in the brain you know little rushes of serotonin people get physically addicted to that and they get like literally physically addicted to the, the drug and then those things are tied to like physical actions in it you know the, the pre-approved actions that the society is pushing forward which is like drink coffee work all the time <laughs> you know all, all that sort of shit um you get sort of like mashed into that a little bit and um if he if uh kurt vonnegut back in the day if he saw that the way that was going and the way that it is now like that all technology is going to we're going to be symbiotic with these little phones and the internet and all the rest of it and the massive like implications of that um it was like it was like a, his argument overall was so ridiculous if you want it's like it's the most exaggerated expression of this like pure euphoria that you can buy with money it wasn't just like you get a bit of a rush it, or you know it was like heroin where you come down you get addicted it was like the the final form of <laughs> consumer it was like you know what i mean it yeah, was the yeah. fucking super saiyan of all like capitalist greed that you like uh, just die watching this machine and that's it like everybody would just begin watching it and that'd be it it's the iphone 10 that's what it is isn't it yeah. like the the ufio phone is the iphone 10 it's yeah. just constantly have this device on you all age groups everyone can use it for different purposes but like you say it's those little whether it be social media or checking the news feeds or you know playing a little uh, free to play game whatever it is yeah. with your smartphone it's constantly um you know like pokemon or anything like that it's those little hits that you're constantly getting and that is a chemical hit that's happening in your brain it is a drug and so you are essentially becoming a drug addict without really realizing it yeah exactly that man it's kind of crazy isn't it like yeah that's pretty exactly it like the drug model again is just absolutely perfect <laughs> because because it's exactly like that i just think mate you know, can you imagine if somebody actually like invented something like that i think i don't know i, I mean like what would happen <laughs> it would yeah. be the end of the world wouldn't it surely <laughs> like it literally would be the end of everything and that's why it's negative because it, it'd fuck people up i think as well like a lot of the times they were talking about happiness in a really like broad sort of a way and happiness is actually like that's a really big thing or it's a really large concept it's got many different interpretations and meanings and whatnot and i think that's actually like within the branch of happiness you could consider like fulfillment in your life or um you know achieving goals and shit like in your life all those things w would fall under like things that would make you happy if you know what i mean like it's all, it's all the same sort of concept so and again it was like happiness in its most literal most like almost like most basic form that it was it, it was like a total body euphoria and the just it bl blanked your mind out it was like the most extreme version of it possible and uh it, yeah in that it was just like just kind of ridiculous and how, how funny it was and how accurate it, it's become and stuff like that um in this and again just like the same as like any sort of addictive drug you'll just fuck your life up and that's in that way when they were talking about it in the uh the courtroom though the people were like pretty much okay in it to be put on sale so for me it was like you know if humanity is given the fucking a loaded gun if we get nuclear weapons or we have big horrible drugs in a society like people are going to do it people are going to push the buttons you know what i'm saying like we're like that and i think as people or maybe that's a part of it just impulsive no <laughs> i think mike's gone <laughs> it's me for a minute i'll invite him back
Oh, man. Uh, no, it's still on air, I think. <laughs> No shit, man. Right. All right. Yeah, uh, much how long we've been going right now. I'll, yeah, I'll say something. All right, I sent you the invite anyway, so I'll see you in a minute. But... Uh, Mike's got a cough, so we'll skip this bit out. I'll put a link in the thing when we get back, uh, when it gets put on YouTube, and I'll say just skip, you know, skip to this little bit. Um, Mike's connection went down, basically, so she'll be back in a second. Yeah, man. Hello. Sorry about Hi. that. Yeah, apologies. My uh, my internet went down. What a fucking annoying time for your internet to go down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, said well, mate. No worries. I just uh, I think I was speaking when you, when you went, and I think I was speaking for quite a while after you got. So like, and then wondering like, why the response didn't come. Yeah. So I just kept going. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, yeah. What. What, where were we at? Uh, I was saying, I forget the last thing, but it was just that um, it was like a really like fully formed idea of like a really exaggerated kind of uh, like an endpoint of consumer greed and shit like that. That a person would um, like the ultimate form of these little hits we get addicted to, and the dopamine and the serotonin, like in his modern modern life now. So I've really developed idea of it. Is that that she's like a machine you can just flick on, but um, yeah, um, that if I, if humanity had the button, uh, if we had we got the nuclear weapons, if we had a euphoria machine that you'd literally die listening to, do you know what I mean? Like, you would quite literally just listen to it until you died, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is meant not really, but would you pull the trigger? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, would humanity just fucking do it? And we found so far that generally people do. And in that in that thing, the uh, in the story, uh, they pretty much did. They like okayed it for commercial sale. So that would have been pretty much the end of them, I'm sure. Um, or would it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I guess. Um, I, well, the chances are as well, if you think about it, because um, power and influence is directly associated with money now and generally the people who have all the money are the big corporations so therefore they have all the power and influence especially in you know america which is where you know this was describing um the chances are that the type of people that would come across this in the first instance the type of people that would discover this because of the technology are the big corporations you know like your googles um and companies of that ilk microsoft um Surely it'd be somebody like that that would potentially sort of discover it and would you really want it in their hands? Because mm. are they really just going to be like, nah, this is not a business opportunity? I think, genuinely right, if you're if you're dead, you can't give them any money. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so I think it'd be one of them situations where if smoking was really that bad for you, they wouldn't have a, a customer. They wanted to like keep you going enough <laughs> To live through it and just keep smoking, do you know what I mean? Just <laughs> keep smoking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, Smoke. Yeah. I fucking love that bit. You know the Simpsons where um it's itchy and scratching on the beach and it's like it's Bill Cosby or something like that. And it, it's like a you know a jokey representation of him. 
and they're talking about Laramie. What's the name of this? Is it Laramie Blue or something on Simpsons? Like they're, oh, I forget what they're called anyway, but Laramie Summit. And they're on the advert, he's just going, I don't know what's in them, but I just know I can't stop smoking them. <laughs> but he does it and he's like, I don't know what's in them. That's yeah. really shit. Like, it's really I just place. know. <laughs> I can't stop smoking them. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good. And that's it, and it just like smoke cigarettes and don't give a fuck. But yeah, if you were dead, mate, you wouldn't be able to fucking do that. And there's no well, way that they want you to perish immediately with this happiness. So they'd give it you bit by bit. They'd drain you of all your money. They'd make it right at the top of your list of priorities every fucking day to keep spending this money and 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 mong out. And then they'd limit it to a point where it was either too expensive or they would stop you from being some sort of an addict in the same model as they do with they don't serve drunk people at bars. A drug dealer won't sell you the coke if you like out your mind. You know what I'm saying? Like it, people look out for each other in that way as well. So it's like Yeah. That. I mean But everything that you've just said says to me that we're already there, you know, like yeah. the idea that they have discovered it, they have discovered what makes people happy and how this sort of system works. Um, you know, chemically, they've discovered how the human brain works after fucking centuries of, you know, fucking capitalism and obviously decades and decades of marketing. They've discovered exactly what processes happen up there um, when it comes to consumer goods. And so when it comes to like things like, video games, Netflix, um, smartphones, the internet, um, fast food. Obviously, when I say they, I don't mean like, you know, the six people that sit around the desk that conquer the world and they're like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, obviously, independently, each of these companies have figured out this model and so they're all following it because it works. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I don't group them all together and necessarily think that they're all in on it. I just think it makes sense for them to make money in such a way because it does work. So mm. that's why I guess all these companies follow that model. But yeah, I think that the UFO phone has already been discovered and that we just don't get intense blasts of it because maybe people will die, maybe people will it'll scare them and wake them up into realizing mm. that that's not the sort of life that they want to lead. So instead They'll do it almost subconsciously by giving these little dopamine UFO hits like mm. through, all, through all those services and programs that we've mentioned. That's really uh, interesting, man. That's an interesting idea. Like people are going to, it'd wake you up if you saw like actually, you know, the, the goals that you were actually chasing. Like if you saw the end result of what you were actually going for, do you know what I mean? I think it, because more and more, like for me, it's become about balance. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to just like chasing one thing relentlessly. And I honestly think like if someone's default mode is to just be like super positive, then that's not, it's not really authentic. Do you know what I mean? Because like as human, you know, as human beings and all that, we do definitely feel all the range of emotions at, at some point in your life, you know, like anger and blame and pride and all, all that sort of shit. Like every, every one of them, like we all do it at some point. So like, if you don't have that dimension to look at it from maybe like positive and negative, I find that kind of weird. Um, And it like, yeah, no, it's like, you have to be sad to appreciate that happiness. You have to earn it sometimes. And it has to be, it's like, well, if you have time off, if you've worked for the time off and you've been looking forward to ages, it's always so much more worthwhile. Like there's so much more to the happiness than just the actual feeling in that moment right then. Like there's a load of complex emotions that are all encapsulated within happiness in that way. And I don't think like that <laughs> it was a very like shallow happiness. Do you know what I mean? Where it was just very, it was almost very surface level. And then it was more that they just didn't care about the rest of their life. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to it, um, you know, that, I don't know, that being a good thing. It was just indifferent, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, which isn't really the, you know, it, they were more just careless than really like necessarily happy. I don't know. It's not, didn't, yeah. It's it didn't weird. sound happy. It sounded like empty and they've just escaped from everything, which was why there's a, ah, because ah, isn't I'm happy. People don't say happy ah like that when they're happy. They say that when they're relieved. They say that when something has gone from them. You know, like that's why you, you fucking take a absolutely stonking horse piss for like three minutes and you're like, ah <laughs> like because you're relieved. Um and so I guess them making that noise when they're turning the UFO phone on is more all the shit that they hate and all the problems and all the 
lack of happiness. They're being relieved now from the lack of happiness. Um, mm. And yeah, that's maybe where that noise comes from, like the, the ah noise. Yeah, it's not a suggest as well. Like they were, they weren't happy to start off with. You know what I mean? Like you can obviously infer that massively. It was like the stress, and obviously, like you know, if you were really happy, and then somebody, you know, if you were like eight out of ten happy, and somebody ramped you up to eight, it's like well, that's where I'm already at. Like that's fine. Are you gonna, not going to notice a different sort of thing? Whereas they were obviously like from the place that they, like emotionally started off sort of thing. This euphoria was like this blissful release from all the stress and all the shit that they sort of implied they were already going through. Uh, despite on paper, all three of the characters having strong, noble like professions and radio presenter and a sociologist, and I forget what the other guy was. Uh, is the guy that had a telescope? It was a fisherman. The fisherman, yeah. Uh, no, and they were all quite. I'm... Sorry, man, strong. I made that up. Did you make the fisherman? I make. I made it up. Okay. What did he do, man? There was the third one. There was the sociologist that had the telescope. Who, who's the guy that builds it? Like, no, there must be a sociologist, a radio presenter, and some sort of scientist or engineer, surely. Maybe. I don't know. We should definitely know that. <laughs> it, it is only, like, a Google away. Um, I'll have a quick look. Sorry, you were making a point. Uh, that they all were just, like, pretty standard, pretty respectable people. But they all, um, what was I saying? I can't necessarily remember, man. Like I had a point going there, and I got sidetracked by not knowing what the, uh, <laughs> not remembering the uh, the characters' names in the book. Not good. Just looking for it. Well, it's called Dr. Fred. Ah, oh, here we go. So it says, I won't deny that all three of us, Lou Harrison, the radio announcer, Dr. Fred Bachman, the physicist, and myself, a sociology professor, found peace of mind. So, yeah, he, he was a physicist. Right, sweet. So he must have created the uh, the television with the signal like coming to it or something. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, there's a really interesting line in the final paragraph, or maybe this, no, it's the second to last paragraph, where it says, where he's kind of addressing that commission, and he's saying, the question is not whether UFIA works, it does. The question is rather whether or not America is to enter a new and distressing phase of history where men no longer pursue happiness, but buy it. Hmm. That that sums up the entire story, I think, doesn't it? Like, yeah, it does, yeah. That's very perfect, one. Yeah. And I think... That's why I would argue that we're already there and it's not some far flung fictional thing. I think we are, man. That's what I was, you know, you, you are drawing parallels to your own life and there's so many. Like, so, so many of them were just like absolutely spot on, pretty much. Um, but, oh, man, I just, they, they would obviously approve it. And I don't know whether it just, it literally, it's like, it's pretty, we're pretty much already there in various ways. We've pretty much already got those models, the business model that it had fit onto. Like in society, because you just do the same thing as alcohol or something like that. You know, you'd take an existing model, and they'd get people in on it, and then it'd be like it's like selling air to people and shit. You know, it's like it's kind of a cynical, like right. it's not good, is it? Like no matter what, like the moral, like I don't think the morals are, are there for it. Like even though, I, like, I don't know. I think it just shows you how ridiculous it is to be pursuing these happiness or these like happiness in your actual life, and. Uh, all the way down like i think it's just, it's a really powerful example of how people actually put too much emphasis on these they want to feel good all the time it's like i want to keep getting these dopamine hits of buying things and fast food and shit like that it's just i don't know some like i said really well developed expression of it man it's, it's not good it's like it's it's evil in the same way that those the fast food industries are kind of evil do you know what i mean it's kind of negative that they're sort of like preying on people's natural tendencies for addiction and then selling it to them do you know what I'm saying? Like it's pretty much the same on the on the surface of it. But like I said, this is just some like really extreme example of it. That it's like an emotional feeling. It's like it, the analogy of drugs is pretty is, is close to I think is right. You know, like from I don't, I don't know personally, obviously, but from something like a heroin addiction. Do you know what I mean? Like the way that they sort of like loll about and don't give a fuck about anything. Yeah, and like the way because you'll you know you see them on the high streets and stuff. What I presume to be addicts of hard drugs. Um, and 
they race around. They're either sat there doing nothing or they're racing around. And what they are is they're on a fucking mission because they feel like shit right now. And the only thing what's happening in their life that allows them a little bit of happiness or a peace to escape is the mission to get the next hit. And so they're off to fucking, you know, Louis's place so that he can call somebody so that they can set up this fucking thing and maybe they're going to go steal a bike and they need to sell that to him. And now together as a group, they will have enough money. Like if they mm. took all that kind of ingenuity and teamwork, cooperation and like quick thinking and creative skills and all that, and if they applied that to any other aspect of their lives, they wouldn't be in the position that they're in. Mm. But they only apply it to the parts of their lives when they're fucking on a mission to get their next, you know, hard drug hit. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like, they're kind of wily, aren't they, addicts? Like, they know what to do, know how to manipulate things, which is kind of scary because it's just like, you're quite intelligent, really. Do you know what I mean? Like, a good addict, anyway. <laughs> or as someone that's addicted for a long time. <laughs> like, <Top habit. laughs> yeah. Like, they didn't perish within the first six months and shit like that, and you managed to, like, power through and stuff. Yeah. You're a good addict, man. I've been um, on the UFO phone for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> She's a skeleton, man. Just like, hey, fuck it. Say something. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> But stuff like that, where like someone's otherwise quite intelligent, and they've used it's just they've misdirected their fucking ingenuity and their little like, you know, their like their wily problem solving human intelligence. But they've used it for evil. Do you know what I mean? It's your power inside to make these decisions to do all these things, and like you're using the power literally, like quite obviously, just for evil. Like I'm going to take something from you, and then because it has a value, and I'm going to sell it on. And then with the proceeds of that transaction, I'm going to get high as fuck. Yeah. Fuck all you. I'm like, I'm just a leech. Like you, you add it, and now it's gone, and I'm high. <laughs> that's it. Uh, that's the process. Like you had a bike, and now forget about that bike. I'm high as fuck. Um, and it, it's just like that. Where, I mean, for for a start, the police can't stop drugs. Like this federal commission in this court, they could not stop any of the like meth and coke and crocodile and heroin and shit like that any of the awful drugs that loads that like millions of people are addicted to worldwide and prescription pills in america and, and shit like that like even if this the federal court in in this uh the ufio question even if they said like oh it's illegal and that it was just out there how long is it going to be before somebody else finds it and then it just becomes a black market like all you're going to end up doing is giving it a load of value to people by making it illegal so like people will be like well there's a gap here now where people want this thing, but we can't get it. So some nefarious guy is going to come up outside of the law and create it anyway. Like if there was a UFO machine, it would already be here right now. And loads of us would already be addicted. Big it's time. just, it was the concept that it was like just discovered. Then it's like a new drug they find in the Amazon or something like that. And then it like sort of fucked people up, but mate, it'd be already there. Like we'd already have it. We'd already be addicted to it. And if they outload it, it wouldn't stop anybody anyway. So I don't think anything like that exists. Otherwise, it would already be here, do you know what I mean? It does, man. It's called 4G. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, in serious seriousness, though, that commission as well, their priority as soon as they learn that, as soon as they learn that this exists, like you say, it can't go away. The technology exists. People mm. want money from it. Uh, they would create a black market just by making it illegal, and the same things would happen with a lot of drugs around the world, as they do. So I guess one solution that I would present to them is go away, have a think about it, and then how do you educate people? How do you show them this? Maybe you could show them something along the lines of the UFO question because the guy has presented to the commission, hasn't he, like the scientist, and he's, look, he says, everything that this guy is going to tell you, it's true. It is amazing. It does work. But yeah. listen to the story that I've just told you. And is you, do you really want you know, our world to go down this path because we might not be able to do a 180 on this one. Um, mm. And so maybe education is the way. And rather than trying to put a blanket over it and hide it and play people's mummy and daddy, you know, and protect people, protect people from mm -hmm. not doing drugs, like yeah. <laughs> maybe they should focus on education um, and mm. that kind of element and, you know, trust that people can make an informed decision. And even if that informed decision is the wrong one, like they have the right to do that as an adult, surely. Like, mm. you know, I have the right to go down to Sainsbury's right now 
buy a bottle of vodka and just sit on my own with fucking curtains shut and get drunk as fuck, maybe <laughs> two months to the point of where I have to go to the hospital. Yeah. I don't do that. I rarely drink. But I want that choice, you know, because then when I make the good choice, I know that I've made a good choice. If the if you remove the element of choice from everybody, then all of a sudden you've got some fucking I don't know, like dystopian equilibrium style future where, you know, art and emotion and everything is banned mm. or, you know, everything has to be pre approved like some Orwellian fucking society. Yeah, like North and, Korea. Yeah, exactly. It's currently happening in our world today. Um but yeah, I just think that people need to be able to make their own mistakes. You need to, you have the responsibility still to provide them with the information on what is right or wrong, what food is healthy, what food is healthy, what food is unhealthy, what habits are healthy, what habits are unhealthy, how you feel good naturally and how you don't. Like I think governments are there and possibly should have that responsibility to educate people on that, which I think they do a pretty shitty job of, to be honest. Mm. Like look at kids desiring McDonald's and look at all that sort of stuff. And yeah, the, the, the education system is is very poor in my eyes. Like yeah. they might be good at teaching people, you know, the times table and how to fucking put a paragraph together in Latin or something. But in terms of real life applicable skills, mm. um, when you're growing up, the sort of stuff you need to know and to be ingrained into you whilst you're young, like they're terrible at teaching kids. Yeah, um, absolutely, you know, man. Sort of lessons. I think. It, there seems to be like a state prescribed way to think, uh, a state prescribed whatever it is, like a government advised way to think, way to be, way to act um, in every situation. And there's state approved feelings that you can feel. And one of them is nicotine, one of them is tobacco, and one of them is alcohol. Um, because they're generally like they fit within the status quo of uh, they want you to be, you want you to act, want you to feel, want you to work a shitty job and never jump out of your class boundary or whatever you know all that all that fucking deep like marxist shit that's like kind of it's kind of true but also very heavy <laughs> very like quite a depressing worldview to sort you know quite a heavy uh worldview to carry around with this sort of thing so i mean some of that stuff it's, it's pretty much spot on like you do you're allowed coffee is a horrible addictive drug but it makes people really alert and you work harder like so that's allowed and that's fine. And there seem to be other drugs that like just tend to make people problematic in some way, like that it generally pulls them out of a workforce and they begin to like leech and take off other people and stuff like that. And there was like all of those things in the UPO question, all of these things in this like machine. It was very drug like. Um, but to that same sort of extreme where they didn't walk, they didn't do anything. They didn't they just realize they'd been there for like three days. And I, I think people do similar stuff like um at a festival, we saw somebody really high on speed that was had been awake for four days, stuff like that. You know, the green like, monster. Yeah. And she had that, they brought that red leather studded chair and she was staggering around underneath it like like some kind of snail. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> their shell was the thing. And she was stumbling around and she had a right go at one of his friends and he wiped chocolate on her or something. It just got right weird right quick, like proper surreal, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. That was from being in in her reality hmm. of the speed reality for too long before she'd come around and realised that she probably needs to eat, sleep, drink water, etc. Yeah. Um, to be yeah. honest about that, video games is a bad one for me. Not so much these days, but you know, in the last few years, like there are certain games when they get you and you're in, like hmm. it is that same sort of state where all of a sudden you realise that two or three days have passed. And all you've done is the absolute bare minimum to continue your existence in terms of shitty, convenient meals, going for a piss, maybe showering, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just just to continue playing that game and, like, progress and get further. Um, and, yeah, you do kind of come around from that experience and come back to reality and you have to, like, Ugh, shake it off and realise that, Let's go and actually fucking do some stuff in in this world now. And, you know, I don't know exactly what reality is and why it should necessarily be a different thing from that world. But I know that in this world, when I do things like go to the gym or eat well, I feel good. And it's not some kind of 
stimulating like stimulant or like fake false feeling like doing well in a game is where you you maybe feel good whilst you're doing it but then after it's over you're like oh like you have this sort of like uh feeling like why was i just doing that for six hours <laughs> um you know i feel rubbish now i feel empty like um, <laughs> So there are those kind of levels of happiness where whilst you're doing it, they feel good. But then afterwards, you start to question whether you should have been doing that and whether you're ever even going to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like things have sort of long-term consequences, don't they? Sometimes it's easy just to be like, yeah, fuck it. Like the consequences aren't now. So what are you going to do? Just like dive right in. (laughs) I think, uh, fuck it. It's not this day, is it? So there you go. Just like do whatever you want. Like, right. It is not this day. Yeah. I think well, what's um, that? Aragorn, isn't it? It's awesome. Something like that, yeah. The speech before uh, Black Gates. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, fuck it. Whenever you say fuck it before you do every, anything, that should be a massive red flag. <laughs> yeah, deal it's, breaker right there. Yeah, it should be a trigger to analyse your behaviour and your mm-hmm. thoughts about what you're about to do because what fuck it means is I'm not going to think about whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can't be asked. So yeah. I'm going to say, fuck it, and just do it, because it'll make me feel good over the next 20 seconds, and fuck it. So yeah. if you're about to decide whether you're going to cook a meal yourself and put loads of uh, different vegetables and fruit and stuff, like all the colours, it's obviously a sign of a healthy yeah. meal, rather than this fucking beige. Yeah, grey like, gray and brown. Grey and brown and beige mess of like <laughs> bread and meat, like processed meat. Yeah. Um, cheese and like you know fast food chains and stuff like come on those chickens in KFC they don't what's up in there <laughs> oh it was horrible you remember that time we come back from uh, that festival last time we were outside and I had a chicken breast like that big remember uh, I'm not sure uh, it was like one of them what you mean, like uh, it wasn't it shouldn't have what chicken has this come from yeah it was a very young chicken yeah or a very little chicken it wasn't nice or a little chicken. It was like, um, you know, sometimes you get the meals, it's like a burger and chips and then a bit of chicken, like a lump of chicken as well. Like, it looked like a, a wing or summer, but it weren't. It was just a tiny breast. Like a really, it was horrible. I felt really, I ate it, obviously. It's beautiful, but... Yeah, did you dip it in gravy? Yeah, oh, yes, I did. The gravy made out of the other bit of chicken. Yeah, yeah, Fuck you, chicken kind, honestly. That, that was probably his mate. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like... Like, oh, just ridiculous. Like, human v. chicken is a very one-sided story, isn't it, really? We just do what we want to. <laughs> what, over the, over the grand cost of history? Like, yeah. It's like... That's some bad karma, man. That's not yeah. good. Like, we just fucking think it's growing, growing them, like, plants in a cage and then killing them and, like, mincing the males up and shit like that. Whoa, just... We need to yeah. we'll back off them chickens, man. They're awesome. Awesome little things. You ever seen a chicken? Like, a real one? Yeah. Awesome, cute little fluffy things, and they're quite affectionate in that. Little wankers, that's it. But mate, a t- tiny little breast, awful. And I'm just thinking, like, let's just, oh, there's just something going on behind the scenes, though, isn't there? Something, something nefarious. Again, it's now, one of those things like you, you feel uncomfortable deep down, and you know that there's something wrong, but you kind of just ignore it, and you don't really yeah. want to shine too much of a light on it because if you do, yeah. you might have to change your habits. That's it. The fuck it button, man. That's what you were saying, isn't it? The fuck it button. You just push it. Yeah. People have got the fuck it button at all points. Like, I've got some cider down here right now. I could just hammer that. Like, two litres of cider. What happens if I just start, ch- like, just fuck this, fuck this podcast off and I just start chugging it? I can do that. And there's nothing wrong with that, apparently. Like, not, that- not only physically and in, in terms of the law, but like morally either. That's completely fine, says society. Well, I say no. <laughs> like, it's not like that. But I think there's a state prescribed way to be. And again, you become problematic. So. The thing is as well with them, fast, just to keep talking about that, the fast food chains, there's always something wrong with them. There's always something. Do you know what I mean? There's always a few like really dodgy stories that get covered up or people find entire chicken heads in a nugget and shit like that or they find out there's some appalling conditions in the abattoirs. Like it's never, they never, not one of them's got like a, like a clean record, have they? There's always something. And it's like if you're doing nefarious shit and then covering it up, there's always a little, like no smoke without fire sort of shit. And there's always, there's always something with them. And then it's like that. There's like always problems with. It's like politicians are the same sort of one. It's just they just always, <laughs> always something. You know what I mean? There's always always a problem. And in that situation there, that should show you that like behind the, you know, behind the curtain, they've got some dodgy stuff coming on. It's like all the immoral stuff you hear about McDonald's. How can how can just some of it not be true? Do you know what I mean, even though it might be the papers is like paying to have stuff covered up on the opposite, like 
Uh, people well, are trying to attack them. You know, politicians that own the newspapers are trying to attack them or something like that. I don't know, but yeah. I think that maybe we should start putting some more responsibility on ourselves as well because I'm not really particularly engaged in the current political system, um, both you know in the UK right now and if I lived in America, I don't think I would be either because it's that famous sort of douche versus turd choice and also does your opinion really count and all those sort of questions start to come into your head, especially amongst our generation, like the idea of voting and things like that. Um, and so the way that I have started to vote is with my money. Yeah. Like, just, yes, exactly, yeah. I don't, if so, I yeah. think something's immoral or if I don't agree with something in society, then I just won't spend my money there. I won't go yeah. there. I won't talk about it. I won't watch their adverts. I'll just blot them out, like, <laughs> of my existence. You know, yeah. like, I just, they don't exist to me now. And that's how you vote. And the reason why McDonald's and other companies are so successful, and we can sit here and get annoyed about the methods all we want, but we as a society are still voting for them to exist. And so... Yeah. We, are, we are to blame, aren't we? Yeah, and you can do that from a negative point of view like that and avoid where your money goes, because that's where all power and influence is these days, is where the money goes. And so if you want power and influence to go to better things or things that you feel more important, then spend your money in those establishments and so that's the way that you can do it rather than being all doom and gloom and negative and having to d avoid things that you know you used to use you know maybe not necessarily focus on the negative side as much as that but from a positive light start spending money in the places what you would like to see more of so say mm -hmm. for example down my street there's a, a real nice sort of independent um you know organic food shop um, that does all sorts of different things not just foods, but just lifestyle stuff as well. And it's fantastic. And I think I've started to spend my money more there. It might be a slightly more expensive because obviously they don't get the big bulk buying discounts that you get in um, from the major supermarkets or from any of the fast food chains or anything like that. But I, I'm, when I'm doing that, I feel quite good because I feel like I am voting for once rather than just putting my box in a ballot and, you know, the outcome never seems to be what I want or anything. I can make the outcome what I want because I get the goods in the short term and that's good and then maybe in the long term if enough people who also want to see that establishment rise maybe they'll become more common because they'll say oh bloody hell they're doing well maybe we should start up a store like that yeah. um, and so yeah you like like on YouTube and the internet sharing stories and sharing videos that you think are positive maybe motivational or inspirational tell your friends about it I've listened to a podcast the other day like the model health show like those yeah. sort of podcasts like i've told so many people about that because i think that that is a great way to vote like you know i'm voting for sean stevenson and his podcast mm -hmm. I, you know i've bought his book and so that's how i feel like i'm contributing you know yeah, exactly, the money in the right way completely agree you should vote with your money because that's what they care about at the end of the day you see so many things that are just sent all the business pretty much the entire motivation of a lot of businesses is to make the bottom line it's a profit Money, money, money. Then number one, if you were a human being, your you would be like your hundred percent motivation all day would be to starve to death pressing the money button. Do you know what I'm saying? To be that mouse in, in the fucking cage who dies taking the the you know the uh, dopamine injection and just starves to death. That's what you should be like. Because and then like oh, um, with the money and everything, it's essentially human attention. Money has its own power and its own thing, but like concepts and ideas can't exist without the attention of the human beings. And it's just, it's just perfect. It's just a perfect idea. You know they care about money most. You know that's their number one motivation. They don't customer customer uh, satisfaction or whatever is never right below like profit. You know what I mean? And like people know all that sort of stuff. All the information is definitely always there. And yet, you know, some, I find myself at McDonald's sometimes, and it's like, you know, you just do it. Do you know what I mean? And I think, um, yeah, voting with, voting with the pound, voting with the dollar you can sort of just absolutely destroy people with the, the power of ignoring them basically. And again, it's like human attention is something that a lot of businesses and, you know, a lot of concepts sort of thrive off and they definitely need you to be paying attention. And quite often it's like the difference between love and hate, they're not opposites. Are they like to hate somebody and to love them, to be angry and to be afraid are actually really similar emotions. The opposite of love is actually indifference. Um, to just outright ignore or not know about something is the really opposite of, of love. Do you know what I mean? So it's in that sort of situation where your power to ignore somebody 
is what people are probably trying to do when they hate on somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like completely blocking them out, making them like worthless conceptually or like a complete unknown entity or just a zero value is uh, is actually what we should probably do and ignore people that you don't get on with. Adverts is the same for, same for you. I know we spoke about it a million times, but like, adverts do my nothing. <laughs> and like the average person, like if you, if I sang to you, like, I'd rather have a bowl of, in your oh. head is the word Cocoa Pops, like, fuck you. Your head is full of it. Like, I watched every episode of Friends, like, all 11 seasons, and there was, like, one I'd not seen. Somewhere in my head, there's a bank of knowledge of, like, every single episode, the rough plot to each one and all the characters and some of the stuff they say and all that. Oops. It's just there in my head. The same as music. You've got uh, all this all this stuff. And one of them, there's a portion, like a part of your hard drive, that's just partitioned off for adverts, and that's it. Just, just consumer adverts, and it's fucking bullshit. That, in particular, it's shocking when you come across some of them things because this, this, the amount of them, the amount of adverts and the amount of stuff. Now I've stopped watching them. Now I've stopped watching the TV. You see them everywhere, and you started to, I've started to notice that on television, like I don't, I legally bought a copy of this program I've been watching on the internet. <laughs> um, yeah, this uh, like a fighting event which I bought. And it was basically like on the on the program itself, there was like a five minute bit of talking and four minutes of adverts, and then four minutes of talking and two minutes of adverts, then an intro to the fight, and then two minutes of adverts, and then the guys would be in the ring, and they'd be adverts, and the the pronouncer, uh, the I uh, know pronouncer, the announcer, like um, his name rhymes with Hoose Huffer. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Huffer, um, <laughs> and he come in. Fighting, yeah. <laughs> in the blue corner. Oh, he's so good. He's so much energy. Like, have you seen that thing where he does a flip or he spins round? Yeah, he's awesome. <sighs> the buff, the buff. No, the Huffer one eighty. What we called it. <laughs> but yeah, like that. he can be bad as well. He's a naughty boy. Yeah, he could be whatever he wants, mate. It don't exist. It's Bruce Buffer, you know, from the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Brucey. Yeah, we're making up this other guy completely. So, anyway, he um, did this introduction. And it was like presented to you by Bud Light, the beer for any occasion, and all this sort of shit. And it was like the no, it's, Trump... the, it's, it's the beer for whatever happens. That's like, it. Literally, uh... we don't give a shit. Just whatever, whatever. We can't hey. be asked to find a niche in the market. So whatever. <laughs> Fuck you and your life. As long as you're drinking that beer, man, that's it. That's number one for me. As long as you're drinking that beer. Whoa. <laughs> what the fuck? You evil. It's evil. Anyway, so there was, uh, the guys had Reebok kit on. They said Reebok down the legs, Reebok on the top. Uh, the sides of the like the parts of the ring were all adverts, and then the floor was as well. So that they were staggered like against each other so that when no matter what camera angle, you could see an advert head on, angled so that it appeared... Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> All that shit. Like, they could not have made more of an effort to completely advertise it. And it is because it's American. Sometimes, like, our adverts over here are quite tame, really. Or, like, 15 minutes of, oh no, 12 minutes of program, three minutes of adverts, and you get one every quarter of an hour or whatever. In America, it's just like, there's just the same KFC advert again and again and again. And the same, like, 4G, the mobile thing for everyone. Or everyone's yeah. like, 4G LTE. Oh my god, and my head's full of it. And it's like after it's like hypnotic and repetitive. And it's just they just know that human beings, you need to repeat something seven times to remember it, and you're gonna watch this event. So there it is. It comes on 14 times. On there's another one, I'm getting fired up now. On this on 4 OD, there's this one where it turns the volume of the advert up while you're away from the thing, and you can't skip them or anything like that. It's 4 OD, I believe. So that when you when you go to like make a cup of tea, I notice that you can still hear it. And it's, oh my lord, and I'm getting like, I just got sick to fucking death of it. And like I say, once it, once you take it away, you start to realise, you start to look back and, and think like, just how, like in terms of minutes of day or like minutes of shit that you're doing, how much of it is like a corporate advert to get you to spend money or buy this product? Well, And that's it, all it is. It's a waste. It's on the TV, you know, it's on the internet, it's on everywhere you look. And like, especially now I've moved a little bit out of the city centre. And I realise now because there's where I live and in the city centre, they're two different places now. 
And so as I walk in, there's a certain point that you cross, maybe when it's get when you get past the ring road, there's a certain point where you cross and all you see everywhere is billboards. So like you say, like on the UFC, every camera angle, there will definitely be a, an advert in there at some point. They're not going to waste that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as when you walk into the city centre down the high street or even you know just on a bus route, a tram route, anything like that. Always, at all times, there will be some part of your eye that has clocked an advert somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, it is it is like brainwashing. It, it's scary. Like, they'll cover the full side of a double-decker bus, you know, all the way down the trams, billboards, yeah. fucking, you know, shop shop windows, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. And, and like you say, in our country, it's comparatively to tame to what I've seen and when I've yeah. been to America. Like, it's it's... I don't know if their culture is just more used to it because it's like a newer culture and they're more accepting of it. Or, mm -hmm. I don't know, that I find it incredibly patronizing when I watch their adverts compared to, like, it, it treats oh, you yeah. like you're advertising to a four-year-old rather than to an adult, at least in, like, when I've seen them in, like, uh, the UK and stuff, they're, they're a little bit more subtle with it and they're a little bit more, like, in-depth rather than just, like, some yeah. guy stood on a mountain with his chest out, mm -hmm. stood on top of the Range Rover maybe with huge biceps and like fucking cigar. And then they just say like something like, you need this in your life. Yeah. Like what kind of man are you without it? Like, you know, they're like yeah. real base level, like silly, like latching onto people's insecurities about what they feel like they need to make them feel happy. Again, like to, to bring it all the way back around, like happiness by the kilowatt. It's a capitalistic idea. It's about marketing. It's about purchasing something to make yourself feel better and to fill yourself up. And yeah, you feel question. Fucking awesome. Like, just look at this. And this is just sort of 5% <laughs> of the ideas that I have on it or what we could talk about. But yeah, all the different conversations that can spiral out of that one short story. If you haven't read it, read it. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Mate, I, I can't believe it. I say I, I read through it. It's such a simple concept presented in such a simple way. It's just like pretty much summed it up in like a perfect um, sort of dystopian, almost kind of evil, like a shady sort of way. Just that entire, the, almost the entire capitalist thing, or at least my alignment and feelings on it, um, which is good. And you know, I've said it before, um, somebody's got a skill if they can make something complicated seem simple. Yeah, definitely. That's the... I think uh, someone said that about Einstein, um, hmm. where, yeah, he could make very abstract and complicated ideas, especially at the time, you know, they were maybe more accepted and considered the norm now, but like at the time, being able to explain something to the point of where it seems simple, when you're kind of the first person that's thought of it, that's very difficult. You've got to put a, thousands of hours worth of thought into a concept um, as complicated as some of his to be able to, to outlay yeah. them to like, basically comparative neanderthals and make them understand um and it's the same as like you know if you want if you play a sport like you're gonna have to have done that sport for years to be able to explain all the tactics the strategies how it makes you feel how you can compare it to other things in other people's lives if you're trying to speak to them about it and they don't really get it like you've got to have been doing that sport for years until you can make it seem simple and accessible to other people and so yeah, with this, obviously, this writing, this guy, Kurt Vonnegut, obviously thought about this a yeah. lot, probably like we have, but yeah. yeah, to do it in 1951, just incredible, like really, uh, really hit the nail on the head. And it's to me a little bit of a shame that it's still so relevant today. Like I wish it, obviously, if something is more relevant um, as time goes on, it means it's a good piece of art, a good creative piece. Mm. But, I mean, for this particular topic, because it still affects our lives so much, I wish that it had now become irrelevant and it wasn't relevant in today's times and it was something that we could look back on on a certain piece of history where we could say, can you remember when they used to live like this? And this guy wrote mm. about it. Look at what it must have been like. Whereas, no, it's not like that. It's happening now. And that is a bit of a shame. Yeah, I completely agree, mate. I think it's really, I think it's a really telling thing that most people you speak to now are completely disenfranchised with politics and with religions and stuff like that. All the old tenets of society that give you a sort of a way to think or a way to live. More people now than ever are actually looking at that shit and are disappointed. But I think actually in the bigger picture, even in the next sort of like 20, 30 years, especially with the internet and the way people are connected instantly at all points now, 
I think actually this initial unhappiness with um with what's actually going on, like a deep almost a, like a sadness, like a just a an embarrassment at the state of uh, of some of the just the, the blatantly just transparent Ill- illogical, immoral, and ethical shit that like most of our societies are engaged in, even if it's just war or capitalism. Uh, most people are, are completely aware of that now and can interestingly in, and intelligently articulate reasons why they're against that sort of shit. And I think actually that that is probably the first step along a much bigger picture of actually that causing quite a serious change in society. Because the very first step of that is people realizing they're not happy with something. Like that's the first stepping stone on a path to, to change in massively in society is people being massively unhappy with because we'll inherit the earth you know what i mean like we'll inherit their people like us are gonna become their age one day and that's it you know we're gonna move in and uh yeah even though it's kind of shit for now and it is really shit to see it all the different greedy like i said just just transparent bullshit unethical decisions and all the rest of it just the almost like the, the action equivalent of people's greedy negative feelings inside and uh yeah, I think that's, that's, I think that's the first step to actually, it should, should be telling us there's going to be a massive change in society coming up soon, like a massive shift. Yeah, I totally agree. Like when you, you know, you get people that are having these sort of conversations that we're having now becoming the norm. And I guess as the older generations that have built the, this world, um, you know, do inevitably begin to die off, I think that um, we will inherit it. But the problem with that is, I think it's not just, it would be nice if it would be like a, a straight swap, like, you know, their values for ours um, or ours for theirs. But because of momentum, you know, you can't you can't just knock it off course so easily, can you? It's going to take a lot longer. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, you will have huge shifts in momentum. And I think, yeah, the internet and and things like YouTube and podcasts and things like that, you know, not having to subscribe to the norm and being allowed to have uncensored, full conversations like this, I think yeah. that will really help with those shifts in momentum. Um, I guess we just want it to happen. Like, it probably is happening really quickly, um, mm. maybe much quicker than we're really, really noticing. But because when you're discontent with something, you want it now. It's like we're doing the, we're like doing the happiness by the kilowatt idea, but with our discontent for society right now. Yeah. Even. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think it is changing, but it's just a much slower process than we would perhaps want. Maybe we'll not see it when we're in our sort of twenties and thirties. Unfortunately, maybe it'll take longer than that. But I think, um, yeah, I think we will see it before the end of our lifetime, or I would at least hope so. Can you imagine if somebody in, you know, four thousand and fifty-one is communicating via some crazy telepathic? <laughs> like future language like <laughs> and they're still going back to the idea of the ufio machine or the ufio phone i think that'll be and it's relevant in their time that'll be a real shame i don't imagine that that will be the case but yeah hopefully sooner rather than later would be nice um i think as well man that my um my computer is about to die and if i stick it on charge we all know how this is going to go um, it will start to uh, lag out because that's far too many things for it to comprehend at once. Uh, all, it cares, it, all it cares is about these little fucking dopamine hits it's getting from Google Hangouts. Yeah. It ele- yeah. It's an electric addict. It's going to die. It's, yeah. it's going to fucking die and it doesn't even care about being charged because all it wants is uh, to be streaming for longer and longer and longer. Oh, mate, that's, that's, that's dystopian, Mike. My com- my computer's become self aware. It's like Nietzsche and something. Yeah. <laughs> my computer's become self aware and it's suffering because I haven't plugged it in in a while. Like <laughs> what we say, don't they? Oh, my phone's dying. It's like that's yeah. the terminology that we use. My phone's dead. Dead. Yeah. I know. Creepy. But that's that's humans like force. That's us projecting our emotions onto like inanimate objects and shit in it. I don't know, mate. Um. Anyway, I've got to go as well because I've got I've got some painting to do. Basically, I've got some work to do. But um. The next one, I really like the idea of white holes. Okay. You know, <laughs> I texted last night, obviously, yeah, uh, about yeah, yeah. it. And it just, one of them where I've just, it blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, white holes. You know, I was thinking about it. Um, and there's actually some sort of theoretical stuff on it. Uh, but there's mostly like, uh, 
on the Wikipedia page for white holes, there's a load of stuff on where it appears in fiction. Do you know what I mean? Is this X rated? Like, should people be really Googling this or white holes? Uh, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, maybe with Safe Search on Google, yeah. Incognito. You're going to find a little bit of porn. All right. There's going to be a little bit of porn, but you have to look past that. Yeah, and, sift uh, through the porn with your dirty it. hands. <laughs> Don't be tempted. Just <laughs> <laughs> stay strong. Don't be yeah. tempted. <laughs> it could be like five hours later, six hours later. They come, you know, like, oh, where have yeah. I been? I've been down this fucking. Rabbit hole porn. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, uh, well, yeah. I'm going to some beastie out your porn. No, no, like, that's exactly the same. You know, when you, you're really horny or something and you get right zoomed in. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get really obsessed and then it's like, yeah, exactly. And then, like, immediately afterwards, it's like... <laughs> like, you know, Michael Jordan is ashamed of Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Jordan is disappointed in Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly um, that. So that's, that's another one where you get sucked in and then... Uh, it changes so, yeah. immediately after. White holes. We should definitely do an episode on that next. And, uh, yeah. yeah, you'll you know be able to articulate the concepts much better than I will. So man, just you can tell me about it, and I'll be interested. I'll have a look oh, right. as well. And uh, yeah, that yeah, should be good. Stuff. Like I said, what I'm, what I'm going to try was what I was bringing it back to with this uh, the UFO thing. There's some stuff where it's appeared in short stories and television and stuff like that. So I might be able to find a couple of like really relevant examples from a television show or a film or something like that. And then uh, and come in in a similar sort of like philosophical direction we did with this one. Excellent. Uh, well, I look forward to it, man. It's been an, a cool conversation. Yeah, yeah, been another one, man. It's been awesome. So I'll uh, yeah, I'll catch you soon, mate. Yeah, take it easy.